I think we all agree motherhood matters. It certainly did for one Utah man who honors his mother every day of the year, the woman who helped him during years of enormous trials. My first memory of my life was being kissed by my mother. Steve Makita has many fond memories of his mother, Mildred. Memories of love, selflessness, and courage. Memories that would help shape his life. No one should ever underestimate a mother's love. Because a mother's love can compensate for that which a body cannot do. Mildred and her husband William knew Steve's body wasn't doing what it should. When he couldn't walk early on, his parents took him to numerous doctors, but were assured he was fine. By 18 months of age, however, he was diagnosed with spinal muscular atrophy, a neuromuscular disease. Doctors told his parents he didn't have long to live. There have been plenty of nightmarish moments. There's been a lot of hospitalizations. There's been a lot of death sentences issued, but I was given a sense that my life meant something to someone and that my life had a purpose. His life has had great purpose. Thanks to his mother's constant strength and optimism, Steve graduated with high honors from Duke University, followed by BYU's law school. And for over 20 years, he's been Utah's assistant attorney general, representing numerous state agencies that help protect the disabled. I always knew that, yes, life would have its challenges and its inequalities, but at the same time, it has a great deal of meaning and beauty and opportunities to serve and, and to love. And so I set my mind on achieving things to better the lives of other people. A mindset that came from his mother's unconditional love, the woman who instilled in her son a steely determination, unwavering faith, and a belief there is purpose in trials. The mother who promised her son that with God, he would never be alone. I've always told people, they're always saying, how is it that you can do what you do? I could never do that. And I tell them, if you had my parents, you would do exactly the same thing I've done. Steve Makita has written a powerful new book titled, I Sit All Amazed, The Extraordinary Power of a Mother's Love. And Steve joins us now. Steve, your book was so good. I loved it. It had so many wonderful stories of lessons that your mother taught you. Can you pick one that has stuck with you the most? I think just that passion and excitement for life. Uh, a lot of the clinical definitions of my muscle disease and a lot of the physicians that my parents took me to painted a picture that was really gloomy and depressing and deadly. And my mother filled my life with hope, love, a sense of resiliency and tenacity that I had a purpose in life to fulfill and that I needed to believe in my abilities and not just define myself on what I could not do. I would never be able to walk and run, but I could think and reason and articulate my thoughts, and I needed to love myself as much as she loved me. And so she became so, that, that feeling of optimism was so contagious that that was one thing that the doctors never included in their definition of my disease. And that definition, that, that definition needs to include the enormous power the, and influence of a mother's love. You had an incredible story in the book where you talk about you knew your mother was near death. So you and your sister Carol were trying to get back there before she passed away. Tell the story of what happened on the airplane. So we were on uh, the airplane on September 14th, 1987, I remember it vividly, and we were over the mountains of Wyoming, and I have a fear of flying, but inexplicably, I began falling 
asleep. Twice, I was startled from my slumber by blinding light, which I mistakenly concluded emanated from outside the windows of the aircraft. But a third time, Kathy, the light reappeared and I unmistakably heard a voice. It was a happy voice, it was a healthy voice, it was a familiar voice, it was my mom's voice. Three hours later, when the plane landed in Pittsburgh, my brother Billy boarded the plane and I immediately asked, did I make it in time? Billy's moistened eyes answered before he spoke and he said, no, Steve, mom died this morning. I immediately asked, what time did she die? Billy answered, 11.30 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. And then I remembered, Kathy, that was 9.30 a.m. over the mountains of Wyoming when I saw that brilliant light and I heard her precious voice. So mothers always are there to let us know that all is well. That was an incredible tender mercy, wasn't it? Steve Makita, thank you so much. The book, book is beautiful. I encourage everyone to read it. Again, it's called I Sit All Amazed, The Extraordinary Power of a Mother's Love. Steve, thanks so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Another great example of a mother's love is found at Utah Valley University. The school's president, Matthew Holland, says his mother's inspiration influences thousands of students in a roundabout way. Darren Adams has the story. When Matthew Holland was named the president of Utah Valley University less than two years ago, it wasn't too much of a surprise. He seemed presidential material. We're going to take the institution to the level of a university. 20 years earlier, his dad, Jeffrey R. Holland, had been president at BYU, right next door in Provo. But the influence in those early years really came from his mom, Patricia Holland. The path to become the president of what will soon be Utah's largest university had some unique twists and turns. Go back a few decades to this neighborhood in the hills above Bountiful, where a mother's influence was never so strong as it was one afternoon at Oak Hills Elementary. Matt's mother had worked hard to get him into a challenging class with a challenging teacher, and he was just coasting. He came home that infamous afternoon with a report card that had C's and handed the grades to his mom. And I said, Mom, you know, the it C's, it's not, it's not great, but it's not bad. It's, I'm average. And she grabbed me by the lapels, got in my face, and she said, you are not average. And we expect more from you, and you're capable of more. And that was a real turning point in my life. It wasn't just a turning point academically, but in many other ways. And it wasn't just about getting A's, but about building a foundation early in life. There's not a week that goes by that I don't get asked, uh, what was it like to have an apostle as a father? And it was an extraordinary thing to have Jeff Holland as a dad. Uh, he's just uh, uh, the most remarkable man that I know, and his influence has been profound in my life, but when uh, the, the, that question masks uh, the fact that truly my mother was the foundational influence in my, in my younger life. And of all the things his mom taught him, one thing he remembers most is the spiritual foundation she instilled in him. When she prayed, um, I knew that I was kneeling in the presence of something profound. The way that she addressed heaven and did it with, with such adoration and with such reverence, I knew she had a relationship with heaven that I didn't have, uh, but that was very attractive to me and inspired me to want to try to have that at some point in my life. All her teachings, both spiritual and secular, influence him as he continues to influence the thousands of students at Utah Valley University, a testament to the fact that motherhood truly matters. For Mormon Times, I'm Darren Adams. Thank you, Darren. Up next, a small book to make you smile. Hillary Week shares the simple joys of a mom's life. But first, BYU football coach Bronco Mendenhall pays tribute to his mother. The most important thing I've learned from my mother has been this past year. My mom has battled uh, breast cancer this entire year, and I've never seen a more resolute and compassionate and dignified example of um, faith and it's because she, she is so peaceful and so sure 
of the plan of salvation and what's going to happen for us uh, in the life hereafter. And so, Mom, I love you, appreciate all you've done for me, and happy Mother's Day. Thank you.